In the frozen trenches of World War II, when temperatures dropped so low that rifles froze and breath turned to ice, soldiers faced an enemy more ruthless than any army, frostbite. Men lost fingers, toes, even their lives to the cold. Yet, in the middle of that merciless winter, an unlikely weapon emerged. Soap. Ordinary bar soap, the same kind used for washing, became a secret line of defence against the biting frost. It wasn't fancy gear or military issue, it was a frontline hack passed quietly from soldier to soldier, a trick that turned simple chemistry into survival. This forgotten wartime method not only saved limbs, but proved that human ingenuity can fight nature itself. And today, the principle behind that soap trick still holds real value for anyone facing extreme cold, from mountaineers to survivalists preparing for harsh winters. Soldiers discovered the trick out of pure desperation, not design. During the Eastern Front campaigns and the Battle of the Bulge, frostbite was an invisible killer. The German and Soviet armies, both facing sub-zero conditions, suffered tens of thousands of cases. Gloves froze stiff, boots trapped moisture, and frostbite crept up silently under layers of wool. Medical supplies were limited, and any ointments or protective creams were in short supply. It was here, in the chaos of survival, that soldiers stumbled upon a crude but effective solution. When soap was rubbed on exposed skin, particularly on the cheeks, nose and fingers, it left behind a thin, waxy film. That film worked as a barrier, sealing out moisture and wind. The effect was simple but vital. It slowed the process of skin freezing. The coating reduced evaporative cooling, one of the main ways the body loses heat. What began as an improvised trick quickly spread through camps and trenches from frozen Europe to the mountain passes of Norway. At first it sounds absurd, soap as a shield against frost, but the science checks out. Traditional soap was made from animal fat or tallow mixed with lye, producing fatty acids and glycerin. When rubbed on skin, the tallow residue acted as an insulating layer. This hydrophobic film repelled water and helped retain natural skin oils that were otherwise stripped away by cold and wind. Compared to the detergents we have today, which you know really scrub away dirt but often leave your skin feeling dry and a bit tight, wartime soap was a different story, rich, greasy, almost nourishing. Soldiers who couldn't afford to waste even a sliver for just washing used it very strategically. They'd warm a small bar in their hands, rub it gently until it softened, and then spread it thinly over the nose, cheeks or knuckles, basically anywhere likely to freeze first. The trick wasn't about slathering it on thick, but about getting the consistency just right. If you used too much soap, it would crack in the cold, too little, and it wouldn't do a thing to protect you. Later on, in the 1950s, Arctic warfare manuals actually picked up on this idea, listing grease barrier methods where things like petroleum jelly, whale oil or lanolin were applied in much the same way. But during the Second World War, it was soap that came first. Mainly because it was always at hand, simple to use and, well, free. By 1943, British and American medics out on the front lines began recommending soap coatings or similar fats as a way to prevent frostbite in really harsh conditions. There were even reports from Soviet units describing how soldiers would rub bar soap into the fabric around their cuffs and boots, which helped waterproof them a bit and cut down on moisture from melting snow. 
On the German side, mountain troops in the Carpathians and on the Eastern Front were known to mix grated soap with a bit of candle wax, melting it over a small flame to make a paste. Once cooled, this paste was rubbed into the skin, working almost like a primitive cold cream. The principle was always the same. Trap body oils, block wind, and stop ice from forming on the skin. It was never perfect, but in conditions where medical aid could be days away, good enough meant survival. For anyone who spends time outdoors in freezing conditions, whether camping, trekking, or caught in a survival situation, the same logic applies. If you don't have access to modern cold-weather balms or petroleum jelly, a bar of traditional soap, especially fat-based or glycerin soap, can serve in a pinch. The method is straightforward. Warm the soap slightly. Body heat or a campfire ember works fine. Once it softens, rub a small amount onto the exposed areas of skin. Massage it until it forms a thin, even layer. Avoid overcoating. You're looking for a seal, not a crust. If the conditions are dry and windy, this barrier slows heat loss and helps keep the skin flexible. You can also use the same trick on fabric. Rubbing soap into the seams of gloves or boots creates a mild waterproofing effect that resists snow and slush. It's not as effective as wax or silicone, but in an emergency, it helps. In fact, modern survival soaps often include higher fat content precisely because of these protective qualities. You know, the W. Fine soap trick wasn't born in a laboratory or ordered by command. It actually came from soldiers just trying to survive one more night in the cold. It's a perfect example of practical intelligence, the kind that, well, emerges when survival demands creativity. What really makes it remarkable is how it bridges chemistry, physiology, and necessity. The same science that cleans dirt can also save skin, depending on how it's used. It also reminds us how much knowledge we've lost. In an age where people rely on high-tech gear and synthetic ointments, the idea that a bar of soap could save your hands seems almost laughable. Yet that's exactly what it did, proving that survival often depends more on understanding than equipment. Rediscovering tricks like the World War II soap method isn't just about nostalgia. It's about resilience. Whether you're a prepper, a hiker, or simply someone fascinated by history's overlooked innovations, knowing how to adapt with what's available can be the difference between endurance and disaster. If you ever find yourself in extreme cold with limited supplies, remember that protection can come from the simplest things. The story of the soap trick is more than just a curious piece of wartime trivia. It's proof that survival knowledge doesn't always come from technology. It often comes from resourcefulness. The men who used soap to fight frostbite weren't just soldiers. They were problem solvers, improvisers, and teachers for every generation that followed. If you found value in this glimpse into the hidden science of survival, don't let it end here. Subscribe to In the Beginning, share this video with fellow history buffs, and keep digging into the forgotten ingenuity that shaped the world we live in today. Because sometimes the smallest discoveries, like a bar of soap, carry the biggest lessons in human endurance.